Welcome to the May edition of Cornerstone Connect. We have a very special program planned just for you. Tom Hollis stops to challenge us in our calling and our comfort. Sydney Goldman zooms in to share her heart about the glory hour and letters from the mailbag from you. All that and more coming up next. Welcome, I'm your host, Amanda Brocker, and I just have one question for you. Have you received your Hope Today newsletter in the mail? If not, please give us a call at 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org and make sure you sign up. We absolutely love to stay connected with you. Well, I just want to appreciate those of you who wrote in to us. We have wonderful mail to read, and this comes from Carol. She said, I have watched your station for years. I I am very thankful for you all and you provide what you provide your audience. I especially love hard questions, sister to sister, along with all the hosts and other programs. I have been a viewer since Russ and Norma Bixler founded CTVN and her husband and someone named Seven even worked the prayer line. Well, thank you so much. Carol, we just love you. We love hearing from you and the faithful partners here at Cornerstone are amazing. So thank you for your support throughout the years. This comes from Catherine and Janet. It says, Dear Cornerstone family, I love all of your Christian shows. You guys are the best. Keep shining and they sent a donation. Well, Catherine and Janet, thank you so much. I just love mail, it's awesome. All right, this is from Frank. He said, thank you for your prayers. You know, we've had that prayer line from the beginning and we are grateful that that prayer line and those prayer partners are available just for you. This is from Dina. She said um, she loves Cornerstone Television. Uh, Move Your Mountain is one of her favorites and hope for today, sister to sister, hard question. And she prays for the prayer partners and the ones on the set and behind the scenes. Dina, thank you so much. You know, those prayers are valuable to the work here at Cornerstone. And this is anonymous. It said, thank you for your ministry and following the Lord's leading. Well, I would say that's been clear from the beginning. Russ and Norma are all about obeying the Holy Spirit. And that's what the staff here continues to desire to do. This is from Carol. I am very thankful for Cornerstone. My favorite programs are Origins, Hard Questions, and the movies like The Savior and A Box of Faith. We love those Christian movies. Please pray for good health and may God bless and keep you. Well, Carol, we just thank you for your health, God, that you would breathe life into her body, Father, that every cell would glorify you. And Lord, anything that's not pleasing to you, I thank you for removing it. But Carol, we bless you and we thank you for writing in. And this is from Carrie. Thank you, Lord, for prayers answered and to the Cornerstone prayer line and especially to the prayer partner called Claudette. I know Claudette. And also, please continue to pray for my brother, Chris, who has had heart problems. Well, Carrie, we just release the healing power of Jesus to you as well. And we thank you for writing in. We love being a part of your family. And so it makes us feel at home when you send us mail. And that way we can connect this way. This is from Shirley. She said, thank you for your prayer for my son. The journey is long and hard, but I'm trusting God. You know, Shirley, it's so important that we have each other when we are believing for even another member in our household. So we just thank the Lord for completing the work that he has begun in your son. And we just thank you so much for writing in. This is from Elm. Uh, he said, thank you for all the blessing through prayers. God bless you all. We are grateful for that prayer line. And thank you, the many of you who support us, because if it wasn't for your support, we would not be able to have that prayer line. So, well, coming up next, we have Tom Hollis, and he's going to encourage us in our calling. 
Hi, my name is Nino, and I've been involved with Cornerstone Ministries for around 20 years now. It started when I was 12 years old. Uh, I would volunteer up the station. My mom brought us up. We'd volunteer, uh, just doing really whatever was needed. I know I spent a lot of hours running back and forth of prayer requests during telethons uh, with Tom Hollis, actually, in the, the prayer room. From there, it led into uh, more of like a part-time job later on in life of camera operating. We learned how to run camera and just doing all the different shows up there. Uh, it turned into five days a week, I'd say. And I did a lot of Arlene shows uh, with Norma, Norma Bixler shows. But uh, some of the best times up there were Arlene shows. We'd help her cook, spend time with her, and obviously we'd, we'd get to eat all the food afterwards, which was uh, probably the best. But um, spending all the time up there as a kid, I, don't, I didn't realize it then, but looking back, the positive impact of the, the family-oriented style that, that Cornerstone family really is, uh, the, the positive impact on my life, I, I truly don't know where I would be today in life if it wasn't for those years then. And you know, looking back, uh, pretty much every pastor or evangelist that would come up during a telethon would say, you know, with the analogy of to plant a seed into fertile soil will get the best result, right? Like today with all the ministries out there, uh, it didn't really click. And looking at it now, like you can't get a better, more like nutrient soil or a more like uh, true valued place than Cornerstone Television. And I mean, it's been tried and true for 45 years now. It's... Uh, the, one of the best ministries I'd say out there today, um, as far as just true, you know, wholesome, they, they stay on a path and there's nothing that's going to sway about that. And that's what, uh, one of the things I love most about Cornerstone Television. Your mornings just got better. That's right, Kathy. Starting Monday, April 29th, you'll be able to tune into your favorite hard questions. Ah, uh, yeah. And sister to sister too. It's every day at 9 a.m. You took the words right out of my mouth, Kathy. Don't miss encore presentations of Hard Questions Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And mostly don't miss Sister to Sister Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. It's a great combination if I do say so myself. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Don't miss it. We're so glad to have you, Tom, on Cornerstone Connect, and I know you're going to bring to life this amazing article you wrote in Hope Today. Yeah, well, it's called Comfort and Calling, and, you know, I think about our calling. You know, what is it? Some of us struggle with that. Like, what's our calling? What are we called to do? What are, who are we called to be in the kingdom? As God, I'm not, a, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a missionary. What am I called to do? I think a lot of people wrestle with that. But one thing I know for sure about calling is that it moves us out of our comfort zone. And I use the story of Jonah. God's been speaking to me a lot through Jonah lately. You know, God um, uh, called Jonah to go do something. And Amanda, what did he do? He disobeyed. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to do it, right? right. I, I think about Jonah. So he was a prophet. He knew he was a prophet. And he probably had a good life as a prophet. People would come to him, he'd prophesy over them, maybe they'd throw him a little money, he had what he needed, and he was happy where he was. God's calling though, almost always, I would say always, leads us out of that place. You know, leads us out of that comfort zone into something we may not want to do. He did not want to talk to the Ninevites. He didn't like the Ninevites. He didn't want them to repent. He was glad like God's going to destroy Wait, them. You mean we aren't necessarily going to like the people that God's sending us to? <laughs> Maybe not. Wow. What God can give us though, he can give us his love for anybody we minister to. I don't know if uh, Jonah ever actually got there. <laughs> we don't see uh, the whole story. It kind of ends abruptly. But uh, Jonah was running in the other direction. And, uh, you know, we all know the story. His, his, uh, you know, uh, he got thrown overboard, the big storm. Uh, God has all his things in place to get us to where we need to be. And, and uh, you know, fish swallows Jonah. Jonah actually, the only time Jonah's actually ever really kind of gets right with the Lord is in the belly of the fish, you know. And then he, he uh, just, Fish spits him out right on the beach, right in front of Nineveh there. And uh, he, you know, preaches the gospel to them, preaches God's judgment, really. He doesn't even give them a chance. But uh, they repent and God's purposes are achieved. You know, I think about this and I, 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 I thought about what, what did Jonah, you know, what, 
what did Jonah do? What were the things that were necessary? What, how, what can we take out of that? And I thought of three things, okay? That we have to acknowledge God's lordship. Unlike Jonah, Jonah was not really acknowledging God's lordship. He was kind of taken off and going the other direction. I mean, I know you're a pretty obedient there, person there, Amanda. Have you ever, have you ever been attempted, though, to, to like say, well, God, I, maybe I didn't really hear you right, or I don't really... I feel like I have, most <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, haven't we all, though? Haven't mm -hmm. we all said, well, I don't know if that's really God. Well, you know what? Step out. You'll find out if it's really God. If it's, right. you know, God wants us to listen. He wants us to hear his heart for people. And, when, and, and the way that that's going to matter is when we acknowledge, number one thing, you're the guy in charge. That's right. Yeah, that he's in charge. Then we have to understand what his direction is. You say, okay, God, you want me to minister to my, uh, my Ninevite neighbor over here? <laughs> and uh, what, so what do I, what do, you know, how do I do that, Lord? Uh, they've always been close to the gospel. How do I do that? Well, that's so the first thing is get, you know, God's lordship settled in your heart. Then listen for God's direction. He will speak to us. Right. Can you give me an example? I mean, have you seen that in your own life? Yeah, I, I remember specifically, I was just remembering with my family, our very first adopt a block in McKee Sport when we were going out. And God actually gave us a vision, me, of an elderly lady on a hillside trying to like pull weeds. So yeah. literally our family drove around McKeesport until we found little Marilyn. We saw her and we're like, there she is. Cause I told my kids like what I saw when I was praying and what God showed us. And yeah. there, and she was our first servant, you know, who we served for adopt a block. And yeah. we were there for about two hours. She loved the Lord. She wept because she needed the help. All her family moved away. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a God assignment. God really does want to talk to us. Well, hey, I, I think that that's really an important thing that, mm -hmm. that we know that God's going to speak. And then final thing is trust in God's anointing. Uh, I was just at the Museum of the Bible a little while ago. And uh, one thing, there's a, a little Billy Graham display there. And one thing that Billy Graham said, he said, I knew that if I would preach the gospel that in, in straightforwardly and in God's power that God would bring results. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what we need to trust. We need to trust that when we speak, when we speak to our neighbor, when we speak to someone at church, when we speak to that family member that we've been putting it off because we know they're going to be resistant, you just trust and let God leave the results up to God. Maybe they'll still stonewall you, but maybe, just like with Nineveh, They'll repent. They'll see that God wants a relationship with them, and it'll be a profound thing. I think that we're hard on Jonah, and hey, he doesn't come across as a very good guy in Scripture. Right. But he did eventually do what God called him to do. Mm -hmm. What would you say for that uh, viewer that's out there, and maybe God has laid something on their plate, and they're wrestling with it because... Like in Jonah's case, like when I read that, he did not think that the Ninevites deserved God's yeah. forgiveness. And I think a lot of us sometimes can have those judgments that we shouldn't, and it will hinder us from fulfilling an appointment. But I believe that God has a word for you well, to give to like us. John and James, in fact, uh, I think I read it today in scripture, they wanted to call down fire on people, right? That's right. <laughs> and Jesus said, oh, no, 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 you don't understand what, look, we're all ready to call down fire. You just go on Twitter, or X they call it now. Everybody's wanting to call down fire on everybody all the time. Mm -hmm. It's all about the love of God. So first getting that heart for God. Mm -hmm. And then, and I think this uh, alludes to it uh, as well, Amanda, get, the, get that direction from God. Yes. Say, okay, God, you've given me this heart. You want me to have this heart for this person. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the key to their heart? What is the thing? I've, I've tried to preach the gospel, it's not working. What can I do? Can I break them a pie? Can I uh, cut their grass? Can I do something for them that will make the difference and open the door for them? I Amen. think that's the key. Well, these are some powerful words from our COO here at Cornerstone yeah. Television. And I just want to say thank you for the role that you play here in keeping Cornerstone, you know, happening. But I would love for you to share your just gratitude for our viewing audience who is our supporters. I mean, if it wasn't oh, for them, 
Where would we be? We wouldn't do any, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. Your prayers matter so much to us. Your support financially matters so much to us. Your feedback to us, telling us how much you care about the shows and how much it ministers to you matters so much to us. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Tom. And coming up next, Sydney is going to drop in to talk to us about the podcast, The Glory Hour. Listen, we were all sinners and we were all, while we were in sin, Christ died for us. I know that when I pray that God and I have a special relationship and I think that it's gonna be the same way when we get to heaven. We live in a society and a culture that cannot handle disagreement. We know what the Bible says is true and the proof really is all around you. Well, these look really good, and we're going to roast them at 400 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, God, you want me to do this gospel album? I want to do it. Let's make it happen. And by gosh, he did. Lord, give me a revelation of my Heavenly Father's love. But just know every morning when you rise, God's mercies are new. Life by your death, you give me strength in my times of distress. What's amazing, he wants you to know what's on his mind and on his heart for this day and for this hour. Now, some people say to use a whole bottle. I think that's too much. So I usually do about half a bottle. You give your all and your life to Jesus and yield it all to him, your life will never be the same. Hi, I'm Ray Heipel, host of Origins. We're here in the Grand Canyon, thanks to you, your prayers, your financial support, we're able to come and make these kinds of programs that help people trust their Bibles. One of the things that we do on the show is show how real science, objective science, looking at the, at the facts as they are, like all of these different layers that were laid down not over millions of years, but rapidly by a flood, a global flood, because there are 200 canyons like this all over the world. And it's proof, it's evidence that the Bible's true, that Noah's flood happened. And so we're able to do this because of your prayers and financial support. So I would ask you, consider giving to Cornerstone Television so that we can keep origins on the air, so that we can keep showing that the Bible is true and the proof is all around you. We are so excited to have Sydney Goldman, our development producer and host of the Glory Hour. Welcome, Sydney. It is such a joy, Amanda, to be joined join you again on Cornerstone Connect. And I know I'm joining from home, but I know our hearts are close in spirit. <laughs> I love it. It's so good to be with you. And you did a fantastic job over our last fundraiser. If you could let us know, um, you know, how that went. Yeah, well, thank you. I wanted to say thank you to all of you that supported and gave generously to Cornerstone Television Network. It was a wonderful week. We were able to celebrate our 45th anniversary. And you know, Amanda, one thing I I just think about is just the history, the longevity, and the legacy that is able to continue on because we have faithful supporters like you that are all out of there. So it was a great week. Um, and, you know, there's still time that you can always give to Cornerstone. Every bit helps. And so we just want to thank you all for your prayerful consideration to giving to this ministry. And so if you're thinking about it, you may be even on the fence, you know, there's still time to give and to help us reach our goal and to finish strong. Absolutely. Thank you for the great job that you and Crystal did just leading the way for that week. And now I can't wait to get to this. You've got to talk to us about the glory hour and what all God is doing there. Yeah, I know. I am like super, super, first of all, just grateful for the opportunity uh, Cornerstone provided and the great team of pioneering and doing something new. So the Glory Hour is an inspirational and introspective podcast that features culturally relevant conversations from a spiritual perspective. 
perspective. So for me, this is like a joy of merging together, you know, my love for Jesus and my love for journalism. And so um, every week I'm like listening to the Holy Spirit, hearing what God wants to speak and wants to say and bringing on guests that reflect that. So we talk about all different range of topics, um, whether it's relationship, because, you know, right now in America, it's there's more singles in America than any time else. The world had time to talk with Real Talk Kim about that, even what's happening and going on in Israel and Palestine. So had an opportunity to to recently talk to uh, a Palestinian Christian to hear his perspective of what's happening during the conflict. And then we've also go into topics like uh, we did one recently about evil blood, like, you know, evil altars and bloodlines. And so just really seeking the heart of God of what to dive in, what to talk about. Uh, so really, I'm just really, really thrilled and grateful for it. And, you know, if you, we love to hear from you and if there's any topic you want us to dive into, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. It has been so good and just enriching, and I believe your guest choice, you're just being led by the Holy Spirit, but I know I caught some that was about sex trafficking and how that is happening right under our noses, but yet we don't know. So how important it was for you to have that guest on. And then you had um, another guest. I just, what I have appreciated is the content that you are bringing to the table for us. And it's not like, uh, they can watch it on Cornerstone Television, but you are on different platforms. I see you're doing shorts and lives. Talk to us about the importance of why Cornerstone needs to be on those different platforms. Well, thank you, Amanda, so much for watching and tuning in and all of you who have. And, you know, you know, our the, my heart is this is like I'm a millennial. I'm 36 years old. And the reality is, is that media is changing. Um, there's so many different ways that people are watching content and it's no longer just on television but we're on YouTube so the full length episodes are on YouTube and Spotify we have new episodes that, that drop on Wednesdays and then like you mentioned Amanda we have a 30 minute version of the show um, that's a special version of the show that you know broadcasts in Pittsburgh and our different affiliates across the country so it's on Saturdays at 11 p.m. and to answer your question I think you know, we we live in a very changing world, and I think it's important if we want to reach the next generation, There, it's really important that we cast our net. You know, we are a television network, but we have to cast our net to the other side. And so I'm really thankful and proud of the fact that we are reaching different generations. Um, most of the people, everyone, the, the majority of the audience is watching on their phone. So uh, it's just adapting to the changing times. And I, you know, as we're in transition. The world is in transition. We have to be sensitive to where people are. And so I'm just really thankful that we're able to pioneer this, do something new and fresh and innovative, because that's like on my heart is to be cutting edge and to be on the cusp of what God is doing now. And so there's it, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, the feedback, the people that are reaching out on social media who are being touched you know, by different episodes. And for me, the heart is it's not about how many views, it's about the fruit. It's about the fruit of the impact. It's about people being transformed, being touched and hearing something that will, you know, change the trajectory of their lives, maybe let them see a different perspective, but really for them to draw closer to, to Jesus is my heart for the glory hour. That's right. They've been very good. The others I was thinking about, you did one on uh, talking about with Nickelodeon. That might have been, you know, just some of the oh, behind yeah. the scenes. I was like, what? You know, it just very revealing, but yet we need to see God and culture. And the first part is unveiling, you know, shining light in the darkness. And then the other one was uh, you had a guest that was, she was a previous witch, I believe. Muslim, and just hearing my, oh, her take on everything. Witch, yeah. <laughs> when we had the eclipse, I was like, wow, because we just, we don't know. So thank you so much for just bringing, you know, great content and letting us truly see God in culture in this hour. So we'll all be tuning in to the glory hour. Thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you so much, Amanda. Love you so much. This is my heart to you and my heart to everyone. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. During our recent Visions of Hope fundraiser, many of you followed God's prompting to support Christian television. The Bible says those who lead many to righteousness are like the stars of heaven. 
That's what Cornerstone Television is doing, leading people to Christ. Here at Cornerstone Television, we say thank you as well for helping us spread the gospel through Christian TV and our prayer line. It's not too late to make your pledge today. Call 888-665-4483. We raised over 75% of our $200,000 goal, but we're looking for a few more partners to join us. Will you be one of those? You can donate at 888-665-4483. 483 or online at ctvn.org. Thank you very much for your prayers and partnership. Well, I sure hope that you enjoyed our time together. I know I always do. I want to encourage you to check out your newsletter. There is an amazing recipe in there from Katie Farrell, and it's lemon pie. Who doesn't need some lemon pie? We also have an article in there from Papa Harold, who is the founder of the Caring Hearts Ministry out of Mexico. And we just love what they're doing. My family was able to go down there and minister, and God is using Caring Hearts to truly show the least the love of Jesus. So, you know, just thinking about the story that Tom Hollis had um, shared with us about Jonah, I wanted to encourage you with this because I too love the story of Jonah and just, I can identify a lot with it. And there's a verse in chapter one and it's after the men discover that he's the reason for the storm. Jonah actually repents and then he tells them, you have to throw me overboard. And so they did, they threw him overboard. But this is the goodness of God that comes out of that. In verse 16, it, because the storm stopped the moment Jonah exited the boat and was swallowed by the, the large fish. But it says, then the men, all of them that were on that boat, feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. And I don't know if in your life you've ever made a mistake, maybe you didn't do the right thing, but let me tell you, when you repent to God, God truly does turn things around. And I love the fact that all the men on the ship ended up getting saved and believing in Jonah's God because of his mistake, his disobedience. So I want you to take heart today and know that even if you've made that mistake, you didn't obey God, that the Lord, the moment we repent, he begins to act and goodness can come from those situations. But I just wanna thank the many of you for writing in. I wanna go back to this letter here from Janet. It said, thank God for my home recently paid off and my continuous health as I approach 65. Well, Janet, we rejoice with you that that house is paid off and we thank Jesus that he is is on the move and he's touching your body and this is from Stan and he wrote in and said I sincerely appreciate your fine TV broadcast that I receive here in Eastern PA I especially enjoyed the Bible related presentations regarding creation and so we know Origins is ministering to many people and how important is it that we know that God is our creator. You know, we aren't here. We didn't evolve here. We have purpose and it's God given purpose. And our prayer is that you will tune in to the Holy Spirit, hear your calling and then go in the name of the Lord. And always remember, he loves you.